Buenos días emprendedores, hoy cuento con la asistencia aquí en Emprendedores del señor Odet Sochevo, quien es un referente mundial en temas de innovación y nan nanotecnología, que ha estado participando como conferencista en este evento Endeavor de Pensar en Grande. El señor Odet es profesor de la Universidad Hebrew University y además es un científico que ha desarrollado más de 49 patentes. Eh, vamos a... a a determinar con él cuál es ese paso de ser científico a convertirse en, empre en emprendedor y, y fundador de compañías con base científica. Odette, welcome to Colombia. Thank you very much. Odette, we will want to know what was, uh, when you were little, you knew you were going to be a scientist? You did like all the laboratory experiments and all that? Or what did you play with? Well, uh, actually as a child uh, I um, was very curious about uh, a lot of things, uh, you know, mechanics, uh, chemistry, uh, electronics, uh, so I had a lot of hobbies, uh, but I never thought that I'll uh, be a scientist. In fact, uh, since I'm coming uh, from a family of farmers, uh, we grow vineyards for, in my family for 130 years, uh, and we also have a winery in Israel. Um, I thought that um, uh, I'm going to, uh, to the university uh, to get my bachelor degree in uh, agriculture mm -hmm. and then I'll go back um, to work with my father. Mm -hmm. And in the last day uh, of uh, um, the semester, uh, I was approached by uh, one of my professors and, and he asked me, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And as I said, well, I'm going uh, back to the farm, you know, uh, to work with my father. So I asked, why? why don't you come to my lab uh, to do your masters? I said, well, I thought that uh, to work uh, on a tractor as a driver, you need a bachelor is enough. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I, I told him that uh, I will think about it. Mm -hmm. I came home, I, uh, I told my parents, and, and they said, no, you're crazy. I mean, uh, if you've been offered to study, of course you have to uh, go and, uh, you know, the, the farm will wait for you, don't, <laughs> don't worry. And I think that um, the first time when I entered the, the laboratory and I started to do experiments, I felt like, like heaven, like going back to my childhood uh, so I can play with things. And, and I, I knew at that moment that I'm going to be a scientist. Really? Yes. You like connected with, with, uh, with, your, with, your, with your dreams from Absol childhood. You were like, Absolutely. this is the place I want to be. Absolutely, because I mean that's that's what the uh, scientific uh, uh, ecosystem enables you to do. Enables you to dream. You enable you to, to do experiments, and and, 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 and uh, absolutely. Really. Uh, so, what was the first patent you developed in that master's uh, uh, moment of your life? Actually, that that's a, an interesting story. Mm -hmm. um, um, my PhD mm -hmm. was on the biochemistry of wine flavor. And um, uh, we came across a very interesting phenomenon. Uh, we actually were not the first to establish it. It was a, a French group that, that uh, found out that in wine, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of precursors uh, for aroma compounds. So meaning these are compounds that once they, they are, uh, break down, they become aromatic. Yes. But before that, they have happened. nothing happened. And, and, uh, and we found out that, that in wine there is a lot of these materials. Mm -hmm. uh, and so everybody were uh, uh, looking for ways to uh, break down these materials to, to make the wine more flavorful. Mm -hmm. And uh, to cut a long story short, uh, my PhD focused on that issue and we were able to uh, find an enzyme, okay. a protein, uh, that by adding it to the wine, we could get a much uh, a more flavorful wine. And, uh, but remember, it was uh, in, uh, in 1986. Mm -hmm. And um, the patent uh, industry in Israel, particularly in the biotech area, uh, they were not very developed. I mean, they, of course, uh, uh, there were patents in on engineering and chemistry, but not on biotechnology. And uh, the patent uh, lawyer mm -hmm. uh, wrote uh, an, a, a terrible patent. <laughs> Uh, the, That's uh, a bad thing to have a bad patent lawyer. Yes, abs absolutely. But I learned a lot from that. And, and, and the interesting thing was uh, the, 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 uh, the first claim mm -hmm. 
was so narrow really? that it was so easy to bypass it. And uh, we were at the time, uh, uh, once we thought, okay, we have a patent, we approached uh, a, a very large uh, European company that make enzymes for the food industry, and we told them, hey, we have some very okay, nice the things. transfer technology process, like yes. building the patent and, and trying to get money from the development. Exactly. In that stage. Exactly. And so we, we actually... Uh, uh, went on and did some collaboration uh, with them and they sure uh, sure enough they found out that uh, it's uh, working but in, in that moment the patent was was pending or you or it you was pending okay it was pending uh, and then um, at that time I, I, I left already Israel I went to the United States uh, for my postdoc mm -hmm. uh, and I never heard from this uh, company and I, I spoke with my supervisor I said I don't know they're gone uh, four years later, we see on the market a product which is exactly what we uh, uh, developed. Uh, what did you do? Well, we, we uh, wrote them a letter. We said, hey, uh, you know, you're infringing our patent. So they said, well, we're actually not infringing your patent because your claim is very, very yeah. <laughs> narrow. And uh, uh, so that was the, f the first patent. I mean, but... Uh, I am still very happy because this product continued to uh, be sold all over the world. Mm -hmm. So I felt that, like I'm uh, doing something good. Yes, and like you, you were right. Someone stole you, but you were right. Yes. Like your, your, the, the product of your brains and uh, of your of your smart development was was bringing money, not for your pocket, but for for someone else for another reason. But yes. But the development was was well done. Uh, absolutely, and that, that made me um, happy enough at that time, okay. and I learned a lot. Okay, well, that's, that's a tough experience, a tough way to start as an entrepreneur, but I think, as, as you said, is, is in the process of learning that an entrepreneur uh, builds its life as an entrepreneur. Um, in, in which moment, like, you stop not only being a scientist, but uh, start being an entrepreneur and now building companies based on your brains and, and your development and your your patents well I think that um, uh, at least for me mm -hmm. uh, very early in the game I, I realized that I, I I don't know everything mm -hmm. and and in fact uh, that I need uh, a good advice and good and, and, and help and support from professionals okay. in every field. Mm -hmm. It was my previous experience with a patent mm -hmm. um, a, a office, but later on, financing, managing a company. Uh, being a scientist doesn't necessarily mean that uh, I'm a good businessman. Mm -hmm. In yes, fact, in fact, much of the times, like uh, any entrepreneur, the scientist, the artist, uh, the innovator. They are very good at the, at the technical part, but the business part, they are not Terrible. good. <laughs> you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. And I think that uh, for me, mm -hmm. um, I, I realize that th there is uh, one very important thing that I, I can do, mm -hmm. and that uh, to be able to communicate, mm -hmm. simply to communicate the importance of the discovery or, or the uniqueness of the patent and the validity of the patent uh, in, in words that my mother will understand. Okay, like the commercial or the marketing part. Exactly, but it's, it's marketing not to the market, no, but it's marketing the to the investors. Yes, yes, that's more, most important, like for the fundraising and for opening the eyes of the, of the investors. So after that very long uh, uh, meeting uh, with the uh, Venture Capital Fund, uh, we were at the elevator and the, the president of my uh, new company approached me and said, you know what, Dad? You're a great salesman. And I was so insulted. <laughs> <laughs> I felt, I'm a salesman? <laughs> I spent years in, you know, getting my PhD and then, and, uh, and, and you're saying that I'm a salesman. I mean, I didn't tell him that. But years later, I realized that it was a big compliment. We are really big and, and like having the both abilities of, of being able to develop 49 patents plus being a salesman, that's I think the formula of success. I, I, I think it's, it, it is part of it. I think that, that, that uh, the, the, the other part is uh, uh, to join uh, with, with good people. Good, good team. Good team, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Okay. 
And um, which of your patents, it's, it's like your baby, like, which one is, is your, in which one is your heart? Well, this is very difficult to say because uh, it's like you're asking me uh, who is my favorite child. Uh -huh. And uh, I learned from my personal experience not to ever say that. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, uh, I, I think that um, uh, every company that, uh, you know, all, all the uh, 10 companies that, that uh, I, I played as a scientific founder, at a certain point of uh, time, it was my baby. Okay. Um, um, obviously, uh, the, the, those that were sold, uh, already made their exit and uh, uh, I'm proud of that mm -hmm. but uh, it's like you're proud of your eldest daughter that uh, graduated uh, and successfully and goes mm -hmm. uh, and then you go to your uh, grandchild yes. and you love your grandchild yes. uh, so I think that right now I'm, I'm very much excited about uh, Core Plant mm -hmm. uh, which is the company that uh, makes the human collagen implants I mean, sometimes when, when, uh, when I look at what's going on around me, I, I have to twitch myself and say, hey, wow, this is uh, really happening. I mean, like uh, taking five human genes and put them in plant and, and, and make human collagen and, and from that to make a, a, prod, a yeah, product that, that actually uh, uh, heal a, a, a diabetic uh, foot ulcer is like, it's like a dream. Yeah, it's in changing the world. Really. And, and so I, I, I think that, um, I think Equal Plan is, is really uh, one that I'm, I'm very proud of. But, um, but there, there are still uh, a lot of things uh, to come in the future. And I, I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, that, that I'll have my favorite uh, uh, next year, okay. which will be different. <laughs>
and things that that transcend and, and like change people's lives if you can do it. Yes. Yeah. Here in, in Latin America, patents are, are not so popular because they are expensive and people say they are useless or, or whatever. To these people, what will be your advice as, as someone that has uh, done a lot of them and has been able to live from them? What will be your, your advice or your point of view? I would say a few things. First of all, uh, patents are essential. Without patent, you don't really have uh, a property. Intellectual property is your patent. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it is true that in, in, in some countries still in the world, it's very uh, difficult to, uh, um, to protect. It's very difficult to uh, make sure that uh, you're not being infringed mm -hmm. by others. But uh, the world is, uh, is, is, is huge. And, and so uh, if you're doing something significant, uh, then there will be significant markets like Europe, like the United States, even China today, they are uh, uh, more and more respecting patents because they realize that otherwise people will not respect their patents. And so I, I think that this is uh, essential. Um, in what way does the Israel government support uh, scientific development? Is there any fund or, or, or something like to, to support these, uh, all this development? Yeah. Israel, uh, I think, uh, realized the government um, uh, already uh, many years ago uh, that probably uh, we don't have a lot of uh, natural resources mm -hmm. except for brain. And the only way to, uh, uh, to extract a value from brain is uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, it's uh, filing for patents, developing technologies. Uh, remember, we don't have markets. Yes. Uh, we are a tiny country, only uh, seven, eight million people. Uh, surrounded uh, by friends, uh, uh, quote unquote, that do not really like uh, to uh, buy from us products. And so we are far from the market. Uh, so the only way we can uh, uh, survive is uh, by um, taking the, the science, uh, develop technologies and products that can, be, uh, that can have value in the uh, bigger world. So Israel uh, uh, established a lot of uh, uh, programs, starting from uh, uh, supporting entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. uh, technology accelerators, uh, technology incubators, uh, heavily sponsored by the government. I mean, uh, uh, for, for many of our uh, incubator programs, uh, the entrepreneur or, or venture capital uh, fund that supported only has to put 15% of the uh, of the budget. 85% goes comes from the government. Wow. And and if you fail, nothing, no, happens. nothing happens. You don't have to uh, give it back. If you if you succeed over years slowly, you give it with some interest. Okay. Uh, so that's one right. thing. In addition. Uh, they set up huge infrastructures to support uh, technologies that are likely to become um, useful products and companies. Like, for example, in the nanotechnology program, mm -hmm. uh, Israel uh, uh, put a uh, half a billion dollar budget, mm -hmm. which for such a tiny uh, country, it's a lot of money, just on setting up nanotechnology centers. Wow. So every university, all the five universities, got $100 million mm -hmm. to set up state-of-the-art facilities, fabrication, everything. And in addition to that, uh, tens of millions of dollars for research. Mm -hmm. And you see that, 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 that uh, uh, um, uh, from all these activities, you're getting companies, uh, products, companies typically find their way either uh, in, in NASDAQ in, in New York mm -hmm. uh, uh, or in, uh, uh, in European uh, uh, stock exchange, also in the, the Far East. Um, uh, and it's it's very uh, it is it's a very fruitful program. Uh, so uh, today, um, I think that for for the government, when they have to make cuts, mm -hmm. the last thing they cut is uh, R and D. Okay. And if you were to to give uh, 
three little advices to some scientists in an university or, or doing some experimentation in their own labs, what would that be? Like to, to do the big step we're thinking today of thinking big in this event, like to, to make it big, like uh, what will that be, that, that advice from you? I think that, uh, uh, I think that it's, it's a process. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a single uh, thing that I can kind of advise. I, I would say that uh, the most important thing is, is really observe uh, and see what's going on around you. Uh, and, um, and, and ask yourself, what is really the unmet need? Because typically, uh, as scientists, we tend to have a discovery mm -hmm. and then we say, oh, we found the drug. Now all we have to do is uh, look for the disease. But this is the wrong way of, uh, of doing things. What you should focus on uh, asking yourself, okay, where are the unmet needs? Where are these diseases or the products that are needed? What does the market need? Or what does the market need? And, and when you answer this uh, question, then the next th thing that, that uh, uh, I advise to do is not to do any incremental improvements because those things can be done by the companies mm -hmm. with the channels to the market and everything. Make something that is, a dis is disruptive. Okay. Something that, that if the big companies realize mm -hmm. that your technology is going to take it, they're going to lose their business. Okay. And by doing that, you almost make sure that they will support you, will try to acquire you, mm -hmm. and you'll get all the help that you need mm -hmm. to develop the product and get to the market. Okay, that's a good advice. That's Thank a really good advice. Well, Odin, thank you very much for this interview. It's, it's been a real pleasure, pleasure talking to you and learning so much uh, from you and, and, and having such an important uh, uh, person here talking us about uh, development of entrepreneurship based on, on science. That's something new for me as a host, so it's really been a, a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure to be in uh, beautiful Colombia. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. much.